thank you, John and Jackie, for joining me today. We're going to, um, we want to give people just some background on the Concern Foundation, you know, which was founded in 1968 by 15 couples. We're lucky today to have Jackie Gottlieb, one of the original founders of Concern Foundation and the organization's first president, and John Carroll, who represents the second generation of the Carroll family and their involvement with Concern. So Jackie, let's start with you. Do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, your relationship with Beverly Woolman and how Concern started and why Concern um, decided to go on their own as opposed to joining another organization back in 1968? Our good friend Beverly Woolman had just come home from her second cancer operation and her downstairs was filled with flowers, which was disgusting. I had worked with MS and knew we could send money out of the country. And Beverly's doctor, Wilbur Schwartz, was able to introduce us to somebody by the name of David Weiss, who was doing cancer research. And at Berkeley, he could not take his money with him as he was going to Israel. We fell in love with David Weiss and decided a cancer foundation spends too much money to make money. So we decided we would try it. We invited a few friends over to a, one of our homes and that's how the 14 couples got started. The rest is all history. We, we were at the right place at the right time doing the right kind of research. And we swore that we were gonna spend very little money and send as much as we could to the microscope. Right, so there were, originally there were 14 couples that started Concern and you were the first president, correct? Correct. Wow, that's, that's pretty groundbreaking in, in 1968 to have a woman leading an organization. You're right, you're right. But, you know, it's- uh, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty terrific. So what had happened was that the 14 couples, you know, got together, decided to focus on cancer immunology research. Right, that was what David Weiss was, was talking about. People were upset with us that we were giving money to Israel but we decided David Weiss needed the money desperately when he went to Israel and that's what we did. David eventually set up a exchange program with doctors at UCLA where we could, UCLA doctors were going to Israel, Israel doctors were coming here. And from there, it just sort of grew. It's, it's really a remarkable story actually of 53 years of having one idea that has blossomed into, you know, thousands of researchers that have been funded and um, some incredible breakthroughs over time. So to raise funds in the early days, uh, Concern decided to do, I think there was a movie premiere. We had right. a movie pre premiere at the old Beverly Theater. And fortunately we sold it out. So I had to get tickets back from all of the people, that, uh, all of our good friends and resold them the second time. Wow. And then and from then, there, yeah. we then decided to go one block on Rodeo Drive. John's father was very instrumental in helping us get one block on Rodeo Drive with Chase and Zizzi Caterer. Right. And then, uh, well, I think in between though, was, there was one event, I think at the Al Hart Estate. Correct. That was sort of the first, that was the first block party, but it wasn't really on the block. It was a backyard party, I guess. That was quite a party. It was Frank Sinatra, all kinds of great names. Right. So uh, celebrities started to um, get involved with concern and help move the organization forward at that time. Correct. It was Bill Schwartz, a blessed memory, who really helped us. These were some of his patients, Liza Minnelli, Sonny and Cher, these were all his buddies. Right. And then, like you said, that um, as the organization continued to grow, it was somebody had the idea to move it to Rodeo Drive. And fortunately, I believe at the time, Vicki Reynolds, I think, was on the Beverly Hills City Council. And John, I think it was your father, Dick Carroll, that was the head of the Rodeo Drive Merchants Association. We had a Rodeo Drive committee at the time. And I'm not sure if my father was president at the time where he was on the board. Uh, but yes, he was, uh, he was very instrumental in helping to get uh, concern permission uh, to have that one block for this big event. It's not easy to get things through the city of Beverly Hills. Uh, but Vicki was very involved. 
Uh, Vicki and my mother went to school together, so we had a very, very close relationship with the Reynolds family. And uh, yeah, and my father being on the uh, Rodeo Drive Committee board, they had a little bit of leverage with the city uh, to allow the party uh, to really be uh, begin on, I guess it was the, was it the 300 block, Jackie? Correct. The lower block? The first year, it was one block, and after everybody left, we put a table down the middle of the street because there was no median at the time, and um, Chase had <laughs> served us all the members dinner. Wow. So Concern, I think, at the time was the only organization that Beverly Hills closed Rodeo Drive for. I think that's, that's very true. Uh, you know, Beverly Hills is a very close-knit community. Yes. And um, it's, as I say, it's, it, it's not easy getting uh, things passed, but there was a soft spot for concern and the people involved with concern. And I, I think you're right, Derek. I think that was the only uh, charity event at the time that was allowed to close a public street. I remember hearing that which was, you know, it's quite remarkable, actually. But I think, as you said, John, I think that they appreciated, you know, this grassroots organization that was starting to have an impact in the cancer community. Uh, well, so and there were, there were a lot of Beverly Hills people involved, even though Chasen's technically wasn't in Beverly Hills. Um, you know, a lot of the Beverly Hills community knew Chasen's. Uh, I remember there was a caterer named Milton Williams, uh, who also got involved at the time. Uh, and Milton, uh, of course, knew a lot of uh, a lot of people that were involved with with concern and who came to the party uh, as well. So you know that was uh, that was another connection. And then of course you had all the celebrities. And I was I was a little kid at the time, uh, you know, but I was just kind of in awe of seeing all of these big name people uh, performing uh, on Rodeo Drive, musicians and and the Don Rickles of this world and Steve Lawrence and. Uh, there were all of these big, big names um, that were involved in the organization. It was, it was very, very exciting. Yeah, well, I think a lot of that um, really took off when Bill Schwartz recruited Pierre Cosette, who Correct. was a TV and Broadway producer, to get involved. And every year he produced a major show uh, on Rodeo Drive, which I think for most of the years there was hosted by Andy Williams. Right, Jackie? Correct. Correct. Yeah. And you know, we also forgot early, early on, we had a thing at the music center. We had a fundraiser at the music center. One of our very first things were Jack Benny, Sonny and Cher, Liza Minnelli. I think Frank Sinatra was there too. Correct. Yeah. So it's very hard. It's very hard today to get entertainers that renowned to get involved in a small organization like Concern was then. Um, you know, it seems like they all want to attach themselves to big, big name organizations, but, uh, you know, for, for them to, to look kindly upon the Concern Foundation at the time, I think was quite, quite an accomplishment. It really was because, you know, early, the early late sixties and early seventies, you know, there was not a lot of, there, there was just starting to have focus on cancer research. I think uh, Richard Nixon was president at the time and he declared the war on cancer and he was going to uh, cure cancer. I believe it was in 10 years. <laughs> and uh, so unique uh, concern was in a unique position to be able to uh, leap off of that momentum that was happening in the, in the country uh, to be able to establish uh, itself as a, as a premier organization, certainly in Los Angeles, but as Jackie said, that you know the monies maybe were raised in Los Angeles, but the the scope and the the uh, impact of the monies that were raised were felt worldwide, which started out at Hebrew University at the Lautenberg Center, um, and then branched out to the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, has gone from there. Um, so as concern became more successful the organization outgrew Rodeo Drive. And then I think, well, John, you were probably present at the time. Yeah, I remember I was president of the Rodeo Drive committee. And um, in those days, the all of the stores started being open on Sundays. And our, our, our party, if I remember, was always the Sunday before 
Memorial Day. Is that correct? It was in May. Yeah. Right. And the stores, uh, the stores started to be open on Sundays. And I remember we had a uh, one of our last parties on Rodeo, and uh, there was uh, the next the next meeting that we had of the Rodeo Drive Committee. There was a lot of controversy from the stores and the managers um, about you know the party and taking away a day that they had for business. And I was president of the Rodeo Drive Committee at the time, so. Here I am, somebody who's trying to represent the merchants of Rodeo Drive, but I'm also somebody who's been involved with the Concern Foundation for 20 some odd years. And I said, I think it might be time for a change. I think, you know, the party is getting so big and the party is getting so important and it might be time to, you know, to do something um, to kind of move the whole idea and the organization forward. And I remember that year it moved to Paramount, which was a huge, huge success. And I think that was the first year that we broke the million dollar threshold of fundraising. Was that correct? I believe, I believe that is true, yes. We had to change for a reason. And yeah. and and we did. And it was a it was very, very difficult at the time to leave Rodeo because there were so many memories. Um, and there was, uh, you know, so much history that we were leaving behind. But we, we started a new chapter at Paramount. And of course, you know, the party grew uh, af after that move to, you know, the point now where we really can't handle any more people um, uh, the, the, the way that we have it now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the early days of Rodeo, uh, it was a very, very almost magical uh, time. I mean, for me as a, as a little kid, uh, I remember the first year, um, you know, opening up folding chairs and, and blowing up helium balloons and, you know, br bringing out, you know, uh, uh, fake hedges to, uh, to cover up some of the things. And I was allowed to go to the party that year. It was a big, big deal for me. Um, but uh, the second year, I remember working and setting up, but I couldn't go to the party uh, because the ticket was one hundred and fifty dollars at the time. And, <laughs> you know, that was that was a lot of money. And, you know, my parents didn't really think, you know, that I would appreciate blah, 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 the whole thing. So uh, I didn't go the second year, but then I made a stink and I ended up going every year after that. So it worked out well. So you've only missed one Rodeo, one block party. I think I've only missed one. Well, I think I, I missed another one because I was out of town, but um, only one because uh, because I was too young to quite understand what was what was going on. Right. Uh, well, you know, I guess Concern was a victim of their own success. They outgrew uh, Rodeo Drive. You know, I think it I think it maxed out at about fourteen or fifteen hundred people, like you said. We moved to Paramount Studios, changed the format from an afternoon into evening event to an evening event from a Sunday afternoon to a Saturday night. Um, and the party has grown to somewhere between three and 4,000 people every year. And like you said, John, um, we're raising close to $2 million a year from, from the block party which started out with a couple of caterers and chasens and the grill on the alley to over 60 or 70 restaurants and three stages with entertainment and a casino and live and silent auction. So it's really taken on, you know, this whole, it's like a life of its own. And so my, my question actually, Jackie, is for you. So from the beginning to where we are today, what, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, my thoughts when you talk about how many people come in everything, everybody has to believe that 95 pennies or 96 pennies out of every hundred go right to the microscope. That's where we started and that's where we still are. What do I believe, Derek? In all these years, I thought we'd be out of business, but we're getting closer and closer. God knows when, but hopefully within the near future, we will be able to be out of business. Yeah, well, it, you know, that is the goal. Uh, I think when when you started the organization, they didn't really understand what cancer was. They thought it was a one type of disease. 
and they would come up with a pill or a vaccine or something like that and cancer would be eradicated. And I think because of the investment that Concern has made in other organizations, they've realized that cancer is much more complex. And so they're starting to better understand it. They're starting to um, conquer cancers. You know, cancer today is not necessarily uh, a death sentence like it was for Beverly Woolman back in 1968. Uh, cancer is treatable, manageable, and curable today in most cases. And I think that's an amazing accomplishment to think that 53 years later, especially for you, Jackie, and you know, the Powell family and, and some of the families that have been with us since day one to see what we have been able to accomplish and to True. be able to still be a, an executive board member, still have an opinion, still come to our meetings and still be as, as hands-on involved as, as you are. I mean, we're, 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 we're honored, we're honored that you're, that you've stuck with us and we've been able to take this dream and take it to the next level. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. But it's also very exciting for the public to know that now in Israel, Concern Foundation has its own laboratory at the Hadassah Hospital. Concern Foundation for Cancer Research at the Lautenberg Center Hadassah Hospital which is very, very exciting to see our name there. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And especially that we were able to do it without using any money uh, that was raised to support research salaries. These are monies that were sitting in an endowment fund that was set up uh, many years ago by you and the original founders that has grown over the years to be able to take the interest and in earnings and to be able to do that. It's really, it's quite remarkable, actually. It really is. And then it to is. see John, you know, John's folks who were involved and, and um, John, you know, and then John and Lexi being involved and their children now being involved. So that particular family, there's three generations of the Carroll family that are part of concern. So John, I, I how, how does that uh, make you feel? Well, it, it's certainly very nice to kind of see history repeated uh, as having my kids now part of part of the organization, and you know, as as Jackie says, uh, you know, we can have uh, the the biggest balloons, we can have the best food, we can have the greatest music, we can have the most perfect decorations, uh, but at the bottom, at the end of the day, ninety five cents of every dollar that we raise goes towards research. And that's what makes uh, concern so special. Uh, and that's why I think we're still able to do the things that, that we do to raise the money that we've been able to raise to have all of the support and all the sponsors uh, that we have, many of whom have been with us, you know, since uh, the early, the early, early days. And yes, it gives me a great feeling to know that my uh, my wife is as involved as she is. My wife, Lexi, who uh, has chaired the block party for, I, I don't know how many years, we've lost count. Uh, and my kids uh, who come out, who volunteer, uh, who, when they were younger, did a lot of the same things that I was doing when I was their age. Um, my daughter, Whitney, worked for Concern for a couple of years. So um, we're, we're very um, privileged, I think, uh, to have this connection with concern. And it's, it's very, very important uh, for my family and for me. Uh, also, my, my grandmother was an early donor at the time. So I, I guess we're kind of working on four generations, really, uh, of the Carols. Um, and yeah, we're all working towards that day where, where we can be out of business. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're seeing great strides. I, I'd love to believe that some of the money uh, that concern has been able to uh, you know, direct to certain uh, researchers has, has has helped and has done some some good in um, you know in the world, and you know as as I say, there are uh, there are so many people over the years that have been involved that have done such good work. Um, you know, that concern is still able to uh, continue and prosper the way that we are. We try and maintain the organization the way that you founded it. It's still a family organization. 
And we're like one big, big, happy family. Well, that's, that's com continued to grow. And, you know, like John says, it's three and four generations of a lot of families. And, and you and Stanley and, and your children have been involved over the years. And, you know, just to see, I mean, to, to be able to, to be out there you know, when we're setting up the block party and to have my my grandchildren there, you know, helping out as best they can. I mean, they're still a little too young to be there, but just to have them there and they get and they understand what we're doing. I mean, that's what concern is. Concern is a family. And right. you all really, you know, uh, established that early on. We're not a corporation and we never will be. So I, I do have a couple couple more questions. So. I'll, I'll go to you first, Jackie. So if you could pick one or two highlights of 53 years of involvement with concern, what do you think that would be? Wow. Well, one of the highlights happened uh, just before COVID uh, made us close down when I went back to Israel. Since I gave birth to this baby, I wanted to see Concern Foundation on the wall of the Hadassah Hospital and meet the doctors that we had used, had come to Los Angeles and been part of our family here. That was a big, big highlight. I mean, that was very, very special for me. When I go to Children's Hospital with Beauty Bus, or when I go with you when you're, I haven't gone with you when you're Santa Claus, but to think back when Stuart Siegel first came to us and talked to us about the children at Children's Hospital, and you of concern too got involved with them. These were all highlights. Yeah, there's, I mean, I, I know it's a tough question because there's been a lot of a lot of things have happened over the years. But you know, you talk about Children's Hospital. You know, when when I first got involved in 1979, and John was in, was involved then uh, as well. Fifty percent of children were not surviving a diagnosis of cancer today. It's over 90% of children that are diagnosed with cancer are surviving and living normal, healthy lives. So if there's, I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment. Will cancer ever be eliminated completely? Maybe not. But to know that that's what's happened in the progress of things that we have helped to fund, I'd say that's a, that's a big part of it. So John, what would be, what, what stands out in your mind about highlights of concern and uh, I would say there's, for me, um, there's three highlights. Um, one would be Dick Sean. And for those of you who don't know who Dick Sean is, uh, YouTube him or Google him because I remember uh, he would come to the parties way, way back when, and he was one of the funniest comedians uh, that I could ever remember. Uh, just, a, just a terrific, terrific talent. Um, the second would be um, the year that my family and I uh, were honored by concern. Um, that was really not only just a very special night for all of us, um, but um, leading up to the party and everything, the fact that we had so many friends and family uh, that supported us, uh, that recognized uh, how important concern was and how important concern was to us um, and the way they came out uh, was really very, very, very special. Um, and I know I speak for uh, my mother and my wife and, and all of the Carroll family at uh, uh, how wonderful that whole evening was. Um, the third and, and really the most important, I think, is the holiday party that is repeated every single year where we entertain um, hundreds of young cancer children uh, from Children's Hospital at Paramount Studios uh, before Christmas. And to see the smiles and to see the joy that these kids who have been through so much um, are able to, to have. Um, you know, you just go home at the, end of the, at the end of that event and you just say, you know, this is really, really one of the things that separates concern from everybody else. And what is uh, so unique about it is we don't just have um, the kids who are the cancer sufferers, but we have their families, we have their siblings, we have their parents. 
um, you know, when a, when a young child gets cancer, uh, it affects the whole family. So we are, you know, able to uh, put together a wonderful, wonderful afternoon with a, a movie and food and a candy search and a Santa and all kinds of games and toys, you know, and for some of these kids, um, they don't get to see, you know, that kind of fun. So um, for me, that's probably uh, one of the main highlights, which I'm very, very pleased it's repeated every year. So I just have one last, one last thing. And then if anybody, if you have anything else you want to, so how would you finish this sentence? And I uh, will start with Jackie. Concern Foundation is. A wonderful family that has joined together to raise money for cancer research. John. I would agree with that. And I think any way to describe concern, I think you need to put the word family in there. Um, family of givers, family of friends, a family of, of concerned, um, uh, you know, volunteers. Um, the office is a family. The board is a family. Um, there are actual families in, in, involved. And I think that is, um, if you ask for one word, that describes concern. Uh, I think it has to be family. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Concern Foundation is Jackie Gottlieb, John Carroll, the Carroll family, and like you said, who are almost who are large, almost family, right? It's one it's Jackie. one big family that's doing amazing things. So, um, thank you, Jackie, on behalf of all of us for thank for you. having the vision to start this thing 53 years ago. And John for, you know, jumping in the middle at this around the same time that I did and, and helping us carry this through to, you know, multiple generations until, as Jackie put it earlier, the day that we are out of business, because that's, that's our goal. So we want to be out of business, but it's going to be a sad day when that comes because uh, we'll uh, find another gonna... cause. We'll have to find another cause. We'll have to shift our focus. Um, that's, that's exactly yeah, right. It's certainly one of the uh, one of the only businesses that you want to close down, right? Exactly, exactly. So again, thank you. I think this is great. I think um, it's um, you know just sharing personal stories and insights. I think it's really important for the you know the people within the organization and people outside the organization that'll hopefully be watching this video. So thank you both for doing this. Right. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. And Jackie, thank you for all of your, your history and your tireless efforts. Um, there's, uh, there, there's a legacy there that uh, really uh, all roads, I think, end up going towards Jackie Gottlieb with concern. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate Definitely. it.